some years ago when I was actually interested in writing about astronauts and what the zero gravity experience was like, I met an astronaut's wife at a party and, um, uh, and observed something a little odd about her gaze. And she said yes, she said she had in fact been uh, born cross-eyed with a squint, that this had been treated surgically, most people didn't notice anything the matter, but I, with my indiscreet neurological eye, had, had observed something. She said that both eyes worked perfectly, but in fact, uh, one eye would work at a time. And I asked if she could imagine what it would be like having the eyes aligned together and seeing stereoscopically in depth, which she had never done. Although she said she was a good athlete, she would sometimes tease normal athletes by suggesting they wear a patch on one eye and um, she didn't feel that anything much was missing and she said sure she could imagine stereo vision she was a uh, uh, she said she was a, uh, uh, a scientist she had read all the original papers she could imagine it so I let it go but then ten years later she wrote me a letter recalling this conversation and saying no I was wrong and she said she was wrong she said now she had stereo vision. Um, she described how it had been given to her through some special exercises and prisms in her glasses, mm -hmm. and she was ecstatic about it. She described how it had first occurred. She'd come out of a training session, she'd got into her car, she said the steering wheel had suddenly popped out from the dashboard. And she thought it was some strange mirage at first and then she closed one eye and then the other, and she realized this was it. This was stereo vision. This is what everyone had, although they sort of took it for granted. And for her it was wonderful, and she said, you have to have been stereo blind for 50 years and then have it. And she imagined it would be like being totally color blind, being in a colorless world and suddenly seeing color. Anyhow, I was fascinated by this, especially as one shouldn't. It has said that one has to have stereo vision by the age of two or you'll never have it. And here was someone of 50 who said she developed it. So I went along with a couple of friends and colleagues. I paid her a visit. She lived up in a small town in Massachusetts. I tested her carefully. Um, she had kept a wonderful visual diary, which was really just full of, of um, wonderful sort of descriptions, sort of newly minted descriptions of the world, of someone in a snowstorm or seeing a tree, seeing, seeing faces for the first time as they should be seen. Um, I was particularly interested in this because I had always been, I'd always had a passion for stereo photography myself. And I, I was a member of the New York Stereoscopic Society, which is, you know, one of these, one of the many eccentric societies in, in New York. And we would go on stereo weekends and things like this. And um, I'm also interested in stereo vision in, in animals. For example, something like a cuttlefish has its eyes on either side, so it gets panoramic vision. But when it goes in for the kill, the eyes are brought forward and then the tentacles are shot out. And when the eyes are brought forward, then it gets stereo vision. So what with her letter and my own interest and being interested in, in cuttlefish and squids and things, so this, this all came together in a sort of piece, which was partly about her, partly about myself, partly about the history of photography, partly about animals with stereo vision, and so it's so so that's the sort of the strange mixture which which occurs with me.